Good morning. My name is Mary Stanley and I'm with Henrico Recreation and Parks. And we are here at Deep Run Park. When we have some special guests with us today, we have Mr. Ed Olson and we have Park Services here to help us plant a tree. So let's go to Ed. Thank you, Mary. Uh, my name is Ed Olson and I'm the Henrico County Agriculture Agent with Virginia Cooperative Extension. We're here today to plant a, a Yoshino cherry tree. So our first step is that we're going to be digging a hole. The proper size for a hole is that the uh, depth of the hole is as deep as the container or root ball that the tree comes in. The width of the hole is two to three times the width of the container. So our folks here are uh, digging out our hole, removing the soil. If you have a lot of clay in your hole, you'll use your shovel and score the sides of the hole so that helps allow roots to then penetrate into that very thick uh, clay layer. Um, <clears throat> when is the best time to plant a tree? Uh, you can plant a tree any time of the year as long as the ground's not frozen. The best time to plant a tree is in the fall because at that time the tree is not using its leaves. Uh, in this case, it's a deciduous tree uh, and it puts its energy into producing a good root system throughout the winter when it doesn't have a lot of stress on it. So it comes into the springtime a lot more uh, well established. So this is a perfect time of the year to plant a tree like this. So in this case, the hole was just slightly a little deeper than what we needed. And so we're packing down the material. The reason we wanna do that is that we don't want loose material underneath the root ball. If we have any loose material underneath the root ball, as that material starts to pack by itself, compress by itself, that tree is gonna sink in the hole. And then the tree will end up being too deep, which will cause problems, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but in a couple years, it could then lead to problems where the tree is stressed and we may lose the tree. So to remove the tree from the container, they're gonna slightly pound on the sides of the container and then gently lift the tree out of the container. And here we can see that the tree has a lot of what we call circling roots. That's because it's in a circular container. If we leave those roots uh, alone, what ends up happening is those roots keep growing in that circular fashion. They have a little bit of memory. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take a knife and we're gonna make four cuts uh, around the uh, root system, about an inch to two inches deep, uh, uh, four different um, lines around the uh, ball of that tree. And what that does is it cuts the roots. It's not gonna hurt them, uh, but it cuts the roots and then those roots are gonna branch out. And so it will cause those roots to branch out and grow in a different direction. And so then they won't grow, keep growing in that circular fashion. This is a great practice to do for any containerized plant, not just trees. You can do this for shrubs and you can also do it for your annuals. Um, a lot of times with the annuals, they're such a small root ball, you can just use your fingers and what we call kind of tickle the roots um, to kind of tease them apart. So do you put any um, fertilizer or any compost or anything in with the tree when you plant the tree? Good question, Mary. No, we don't put anything into the hole. Uh, we, uh, research has shown that that uh, will severely limit the growth of the tree. We want that tree to grow right out into the native soil that it's going to grow in. If we amend the soil with uh, compost or um, um, something else, um, then what happens is that those roots will grow out into that newer soil and then they'll stop when they hit the native soil. Um, and then it'll take a while for it to the grow, then grow into the native soil. So we want it to grow straight into the native soil. So we've loosened the soil. We're not gonna put clumps in, but we've loosened the soil. So they're gonna go ahead and place the tree into the hole. And our gentlemen here have already figured out which is the front of the tree and which is the back of the tree. So they're gonna adjust it slightly and turn it so it faces the direction that they want it to, to face. You can see the tree has a, a slight natural flat side to it. And so they're putting that on towards the back side of the structure. One question. So when you say the front or the back of the tree, how do you determine which one's the front? Is it based on what it looks like? What's the front or back of the tree? It's based on what it looks like and the branch angle. So in, like I said, in this case, there's more of a flat side on the uh, one side of the tree than the other. And so they were putting the flat side towards the back 
of the this area so that the the fullness will be what you see when you walk into the area so they've placed the tree and we are uh, at grade or slightly above grade which is great and now they're going to uh, backfill the soil into the holes and we're not necessarily packing it but we do want to try to take out any big air spaces so you can see that as they're backing filling they're kind of tamping out the, the soil making sure that it fills in appropriately if you don't do that then what happens is uh, after it waters and it starts to settle you'll see a, a big depression around it so while they're not compacting it they are trying to uh, get rid of those big air gaps into the soil so this is a yoshino cherry a yoshino cherry is one of the earliest blooming cherry trees that we have uh, in the area uh, this has a single light pink bloom it is similar to the varieties of cherry trees that grow around the washington um, uh, basin up in DC for the cherry festival. So it will be some a uh, great visual appearance here in uh, Deep Run Park So One more question so because this is a newly planted tree it will still be blooming in spring don't cherries bloom in spring Yes, cherries bloom in spring um, and it has already developed the flower buds on it. It develops, starts developing the flower buds in late July into August. And so those flower buds are already developed onto this tree. Cherry trees don't have to be really big in order to start to flower. Some trees, uh, they need to be more mature before they flower. So like a magnolia, uh, you may get a six foot one uh, and you might get maybe one bloom off of it. It needs to be bigger before it will uh, do a lot more flowering. But this one should have uh, some really good flower buds set on it. So they're backfilling the soil, as we, we mentioned, and slightly compacting it. And then they're gonna make a little bit of a, a well around it so that when water is placed on it, that water will stay on that root ball and not just wash away. Cause that's where the roots are, is in that root ball right now. So we don't want it to, to uh, water to just run off and not be useful. So they're gonna make a slight little well around the tree that will help hold the water into place. So while they're finishing up uh, with that, uh, filling the hole back in, uh, now's a good time to talk about pruning. A lot of people wanna know uh, if they should prune their new trees. Uh, typically, you don't do any pruning to new trees except for the three Ds. If you have damaged material, diseased material, or dead material. So in this case, we've already walked around the tree and looked at it, and um, there's a branch over here on the right side of the tree that during shipment, the branch got damaged and it got snapped. And so we, what we wanna do is we wanna go and clip that off and make a good clean cut so that the, we don't allow diseases to get into the tree. So that's uh, one of the branches we're gonna fix and, and clean up. The other thing that we're going to do is we're gonna remove all tags and flagging from the tree, uh, particularly that may have come from the nursery. So we still have the uh, label on it that identified what type of tree it was and we're going to take that off we're also going to remove this stake and the green tape that was on there that bamboo stake was placed in there by the nursery to help um, form that tree so it grew straight in the nursery it's really not providing any support for our tree it was just there uh, by the nursery in order to keep that tree growing very straight because um, people don't like a crooked trunk on their tray. So, um, but it's just a very slight bamboo stick and it's not providing any support for that tree. This tree is a very small tree. It's about six to eight feet tall. Typically, you don't need to worry about staking a tree at, at this height. Um, it um, is not really tall enough. The wind is not really going to grab this tree and, and move it much. If we had a larger tree, uh, we've got a bigger canopy then and the wind can move that tree. So we would then stake the tree so the, the wind would not blow it over. But a six to eight foot tree, we typically don't have too big of a, a canopy head that we need to worry about uh, staking the tree. So this tree is gonna be left here unstaked. So now that we've got it planted and <clears throat> uh, backfilled, we're gonna put mulch around it. So this is just double shredded hardwood mulch that we're going to be using. You can use any mulch that you find decorative to, to your home. Um, you could use pine mulch. Uh, 
Uh, you can use pine tags, uh, but for here at the park, they're using double shredded um, hardwood mulch. To mulch around the tree, we're gonna go uh, put about uh, three inches of mulch um, around the tree, and we're gonna cover up that, um, that well that they made. So again, that will help hold the water in place. When we get to the uh, trunk of the tree, we're gonna keep that mulch about an inch or so from the trunk of the tree. We don't want mulch touching the trunk of the tree because that's a great place for um, its water to be trapped, which can lead to some diseases. Also, if you put three inches of mulch up against the trunk of the tree, what you may find is that little uh, critters will burrow into the mulch and then they can easily damage the bark around that trunk of the tree by nibbling on it, especially during the winter time. So we're gonna uh, keep that mulch uh, about an inch or so uh, from that trunk of the tree. The mulch will help uh, retain moisture into the soil here so that the tree um, stays evenly moist. In the winter, it'll also help a little bit with freezing and thawing and help keep a more constant temperature um, for this tree as it's going through the winter. And there we have a perfectly planted tree. Again, the mulch is uh, kept in a kind of a donut so that water, when they water it, that water will stay in there and go over the root ball. What we don't want to do is, uh, is a practice that's called volcano mulching where it is just all mounded up right to the base of the tree. I have another question for you. So how often do you water a newly planted tree? It's gonna depend on the time of the year. Right now we're here in the fall. We'll probably get enough natural rain that we probably don't have to do any extra watering for it after they initially water it now. Typically plants need to receive about an inch of water every week during the growing season. So here we are in late September and we're getting about that with our natural rains. If you were planting it in the summer, uh, you kind of need to wean that plant off from what it was being planted, uh, watered at the nursery to that one inch of water uh, a week. So you might want to check with the nursery and see how often they're watering their shrubs or trees um, and then follow that pattern for a couple days and then start weaning it off until we get to about one inch of water a week. And here we have our freshly planted Yoshino cherry. Thank you again for watching us today. And we are very thankful for Ed coming to show us the proper way of how to plant a tree. So thank you so much for coming and helping us today. And thank you Park Services crew. We appreciate it. Thank you so much and have a great day.